Hi, I'm Steve Sweeney. The video you're about to watch is the fifth in our Understanding Email series, tutorials that explain how email works. In today's video, we'll cover how an email is actually transferred by sending an email manually. If you find this video useful, please visit our website, www.fsl.com, to access other software, documentation, and references that make administering email systems easier. So let's get started. Before we can manually send an email direct to an email server, we'll need to understand a little more about the format of an email. All email messages have three distinct parts. The envelope, the header, and the body. The envelope always contains the from and to addresses. The actual recipient must be specified in the envelope and does not have to match any from addresses that might appear later in the header or body of the message. The header, which contains the reply to and from email addresses, the received headers and other administrative data. We'll look at a typical header next. The body is the final part of the message. The body is typically what you see when you open the email message. As you can see, the header of the message typically contains the subject, date, to email address, return path email address, and delivered to email address, followed by the received headers. These received headers show the path the message took to get to its destination and the time each mail relay received the message. The received headers are followed by administrative data that can be useful when trying to troubleshoot email formatting or delivery problems. And depending on the actual MTA that participated in relaying the message, the format and content of the headers can vary, but these basic elements should always be shown. And finally we see the actual body of the message. The look and feel of the message can also vary greatly, from plain text content to flashy HTML. But remember, it's better to use simple formatting colors when creating an email, since simple formats and colors more often arrive intact at the recipient's mailbox. And in the next few screens, I'm going to try to do two things at the same time. I'm going to show you how to manually send an email, and at the same time, show you how easy it is to forge an email. What I'll show next is a copy of the conversation I had with the MTA process on an email server that delivered my forged email. The gray text is the system prompt on the Mac terminal. The red text is what I typed to create a connection with an email server and send an email. The blue text blocks are the responses from the email server. While I used a Mac terminal, a Windows command shell or a terminal on a Linux system would work just as well. In fact, any system terminal that can access a Telnet session would also work. So the first line I typed initiated a Telnet session connected to port 25 on the email server. The mail server then replied showing that I've connected the IP address that I'm connecting from and a 220 code that tells me it's okay to proceed to the next step in the protocol. Notice that as we proceed, the mail server always starts its reply with a three-digit code. 250 means my previous transmission was accepted and it's okay to proceed to the next step in the protocol. While there are many possible codes, they all fall into three groups. Codes starting with 2 or 3 mean OK, continue. Codes starting with 4 mean there has been a temporary failure of the delivery process, but please try again later. And codes starting with 5 indicate there has been a permanent failure. Do not try to send the message again. So I respond to the connection with what's commonly called an ELO response, or H-E-L-O, followed by the name of the domain that I intend to send email for in this case, NorthPole.com. I can get away with forging email that appears to come from the North Pole since NorthPole.com does not publish authoritative SPF records. So after receiving the next 250 response, I send the sender's email address. Note the format, mail from, semicolon, open bracket, email address, close bracket. Email addresses must be sent in exactly this format or you will get an error. And after the sender's address has been accepted, I send the recipient's email address. After the recipient's address has been accepted, I send the data command. This tells the receiving server that I next intend to send the body of the message. When I receive a 354 code, I send the body of the message itself. When I finish transmitting the message, I send a period on a line by itself to signify that I have finished sending the data. Note that the header of the message is created and sent automatically. So after I receive the next 250 code, I know the message has been accepted for delivery, so I send the quit command, which allows the email server to close the connection. So hopefully you now know how to manually send an email, and just how easy it is to forge an email. 
remember that anything other than the sender's IP address and the published PTR record can be forged. But if you publish SPF records for your domain, at least many sites will be able to detect and reject the forged messages that pretend to come from your email servers. This concludes the fifth and last video in our Understanding Email series. We hope you found the video useful. If you have any comments or suggestions, we'd love to hear them. Please send them to comments at fsl.com. And please visit our website to access other videos in the Understanding Email series, as well as other information regarding administering email systems. And thanks for watching.